What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, on today's episode, we're gonna cross a point of no return because we're gonna cut the river NSX in half. So we can finally attach a good front end and have a functional frame that we can later paint and make it look like a complete NSX. Um, it's gonna be slightly easier than what we did with the fire car uh, because we are not gonna section the whole front uh, door panel. We're only gonna cut it in half. Uh, it's an easier approach since we're not really gonna use any this front end for any restoration purposes. So let me show you uh, what section of the car we're gonna cut and then uh, we'll go to hyperlapse so you can enjoy and ask getting dirty. So what we're gonna be doing differently here is we're gonna cut the section of the uh, door panel on top instead of removing all the spot wells around the area right there. So that way we're gonna free up the back and that's Jay hiding. Uh, so we're gonna cut the top section right there and then out back and it's gonna take us like maybe a couple hours instead of a whole day to remove the area. That way we can free up the back a lot faster and start getting into the welding part of this episode well for the next episode so there you go let's get to it and this is how jay and i started our nsx restoration day by carefully pre-marking all the spot wells on the door panel before we start using the spot well cutters and chisels preparing us for a long journey ahead of us as we delve deeper into the dissection of the car, we encounter the stubborn foe of corrosion lurking between panels and welds. No new news here for anybody, but we really thought we were done dealing with it. After completing the split of the door and floor section of the panel, we proceeded to use the Dremel to separate the front bottom section of the floor. Prior to using the cutting wheel, we pre-marked the cutting area from the middle section of the panel by carving a line using the Dremel. This extra step ensures a more accurate work progress when cutting the panel. Additionally, we utilize the Dremel again to gently remove some welds that went around of the back section of the panel close to the wheel well. A couple hours later, we were finally able to remove the first section of the panel, which also revealed something that we thought we were done dealing with, mud inside of the frame of the car. After the not so new discovery of mud inside of the chassis, we continue to remove the remaining support plates on the passenger side of the car, each step bringing us closer to the ultimate goal. Having completed the task on the passenger side of the car, our focus now shifts to the driver's side. We will be applying the same steps of panel removal that proved successful on the passenger side. We were really curious to see if there is as much mud on the driver's side as there was on the passenger side. And guess what? There was. There was so much mud inside of the panel and inside of the chassis that we were really considering power washing the car again because it was becoming very difficult for us to continue drilling and trying to split the panels from the driver's side and the back of the car. All right, folks, so, so far we have removed a quarter of the door frame panel, um, two support bars that compose the whole uh, frame of the car, or at least the back side of the frame of the car. Um, what we're gonna do next is remove this end cap, which is part of the, uh, the rail of the chassis. What we were trying to get is to this section right here, there's three spot wells on top. And then when we clear that, the, this section should come out. I mean, that is after I drilled the uh, floor uh, spot wells. Uh, we're gonna drop some eye, dry ice on the floor of the car so we can remove the uh, sound deadening. And that's gonna take maybe a half hour per se. And then when we're done with that, I'm gonna proceed to drill that area. But what I'm waiting, to the dry ice to do his thing. Uh, we're gonna remove all these uh, plates, put the car up in the air, drill the floor, and we should be able to remove this section of the car uh, later today, I hope. <laughs> if 
Before proceeding with the removal of the support place from the back of the car, I decided to place the dry ice on the floor of the car so it can work its magic. While that was taking effect, I tackled the task of removing the end cap from the rail of the chassis. When that was done, we put the car up in the air and we focused on some of the spot wheels from underneath the floor of the car in the rear section of the frame. This strategic approach ensures a more efficient way to proceed with the restoration process, which funny enough, it ended up going down the drain because we couldn't continue the removal of the place or the drilling due to the mud being kicked in between the rear frame of the car in the floor of the car. So we made a decision to take the car outside and power wash it one more time. So there is so much mud inside of the chassis, especially where we need to cut it to split the, uh, the back of the car. So we're gonna have to power wash it one more time. And hopefully the last time we have to power wash this thing. Now, because there is always something going on or something always happen, we're pushing our little chassis with a frame and then decide to pop so that was great so now we have to figure out how to dolly this thing all the way up so <laughs> enjoy our suffering a few moments later since it got too late and the visibility was diminishing, we made the decision to postpone the power washing until the following morning. This would ensure a better lighting condition and actually allow us to see that we weren't missing any of the mud in between the rails and the rear section of the car. Hopefully this is the last time we're gonna power wash this thing because I'm kind of tired of washing it. But it might not be the last one because there is some dirt in inside of the... Uh, uh, rear rails and then we have to break that uh, from the inside before we can start doing our welding process so but let's get to it And so the power washing began. Our main goal was to soften all the dry mat sitting inside of the rear passenger and driver side frame rail as well as in between the floor and the rear end plate of the car All right, so the car is back in the garage after uh, hopefully the last uh, power wash. Uh, and to be honest with you, I think we're gonna do one more because we still found more dirt inside of the uh, rails out back. So when we section the car, we're probably gonna like tilt it a bit and then run water through it and allow for the uh, um, seashells, little rocks, mud, and all the stuff that is stuck in there still. So what are we gonna do now is uh, we're gonna remove this beautiful uh, frame, su support frame from the chassis. And um, when we remove that, we're gonna take it outside. And after that, uh, we're gonna use our homemade chisel and push it through the upper section of this uh, the rail up and on the side and that should free up uh, the back of the uh, rear NSX or the log next NSX, I don't even know anymore. Uh, but yes, that's what we're gonna do. Here, I'll be grinding the last spot wheels that connect the roof to the rear section of the car before we move to the last step of this section of the video, which is splitting the floor in the rear side rails from the main chassis of the NSX. All right, just like I did on the passenger side, I'm gonna repeat the same procedure here. There is one, two, three spot wheels here. There is one, two, three, four, five. Well, the spot wheels are gone, but you know, let's just in case. At some point in time, you decide to fix an NSX just like the way we're doing it, and then you need to section the back of an NSX for whatever reason. You have three of them here, one, two, three, four, five, and that should free up the, uh, the top of the uh, All right, so I'm finally done with this section. And the upper side of the car is totally disconnected from the back side of the car. Ta-da! And of course, there is more mud coming out of it. 
I don't know when are we gonna finish. I don't know if we ever gonna finish to remove this stupid Jatkin River uh, dirt, mud or whatever. But okay, so this is done. I'm gonna finish removing this area, uh, this spot wells from the uh, this section of the car, which I left that on purpose. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grind this area and then grind on that one, that section right there. And then after that, we're gonna put the car up in the air and hammer it as hard as we can so we can split the half, the, this back end of the car. So yeah, that's where we at. So as we were getting close to start removing the back of the car, uh, we noticed that, or we, re we realized that, you know, an A pillar is messed up. And since we already split the back section of the roof, the uh, passenger side corners start like sagging and almost collapsing. So what we did is pick up whatever recycle uh, two by fours, two by six and four by four we had back there in a little uh, uh, backyard and uh, we created this sort of like a roof support. So the moment we remove the back section, it's actually this section right here is actually uh, stuck in between the, uh, the two plates on either of the passenger and the driver's side. So the moment that thing comes off, that's gonna go down. So in order for us to prevent this half chassis get worse than it already is, then, you know, we want to be mindful and create a little uh, roof support, so to speak. Now that the roof support bracket was in place, I was ready to remove the chassis support frame so I could leave the car and give the final hammer taps to the rear of the car and finally able to split the rear section of our ONSX. All right, so as you can see, the uh, support chassis frame is of the car, or however you guys want to call it. So I just remove all that, uh, the car is in position. And the only thing we need to do now is uh, put our homemade chisel and slide it all the way here, right around here, I would say. So I don't know how much it is, like 23 inches here and 23 inches on top. And hopefully, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, we won't kill ourselves because this thing might just drop. Uh, so I don't know how we're gonna do that. So something to think about. Probably put the, uh, that the jacks underneath this bar right here. I don't know. But hopefully I won't die in front of the camera. <laughs> so that's gonna be kind of funny. All right. It was very challenging for us to split the rear section of the NSX while having the car close to the ground. So we decided to put it back up in the air and chisel the first three pairs out of four pairs of spot wells that connect the floor of the NSX to the rear of the car. That way, when we lower the car, we only have to finish two pairs of spot wells while having the car close to the ground and prevent any major damage if the rear of the car decides to fall back. Do I even need this or do you want to just... Oh yeah, we need it. Okay. And after three crazy days of hard work, we were finally done splitting the back section of our NSX. All right, so as you can see, the good half of this monster is off. And well, it took a whole day longer than we were expecting. Uh, no surprises there, because nothing really goes as planned with this thing. So, uh, but it's off the car. Uh, the main problem was uh, the rails inside, they were still 
uh, has some mud in there and rocks and shells and all this sort of stuff. So we couldn't use our chisel because it got stuck. So we need to power wash it one more time. We're probably gonna have to do it one more time because there's a section on the real rail. You probably won't see it. I'll make a video about it later. Uh, it goes from underneath and up and all the mud is all caked in there. So yeah, one more power wash to this monstrosity. But for the most part, it looks pretty decent for, you know, for what it's been through. Uh, we got an email from the insurance company and that's good because they said they want to talk to us. I don't know if it's good. We don't know if it's bad, but at least they are uh, taking the initiative to give us a call, well, an email saying like they want to talk to us. So fingers crossed on that. Uh, we're pretty excited about this half being off the car. We don't know what we're gonna do with this thing. Uh, we were just talking about it and uh, we uh, maybe wanna do a 24 hour of lemons and build like a, uh, a two wheeler chassis or something like that. I don't know, uh, but definitely that's not on our, on, on our plate at the moment. Uh, maybe later when we have at least one car done. So, which is gonna be hopefully soon. Uh, next step is gonna store it to the back end, put that on a support frame, uh, put it behind the building and uh, bring the yellow car and split that. That's gonna be interesting. So we can have a good front end and that will go with that and the back end will go with the front end of the fire car. And with that, we should be done with those two project cars of us uh, and then have a very well deserved break. But until then, we're gonna keep grinding, we're gonna keep getting dirty and trying to get this project done uh, not as soon as possible because we're gonna do it right, but in a timely manner. And that's how we're gonna wrap up this video. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for following us this far on this crazy project. Uh, please give us a like, subscribe, and comment if you like. Um, in the next episode, like I said, we're gonna be taking apart the yellow car. But until then, have a good day. Peace. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and comment our videos. Please consider subscribe to our channel as well as visit our other media accounts at Helix Auto Works on Instagram and Facebook.